more of just like inward reflection of my own self, I was like, this is one that ought to be on there. Um, and when I'd written it, I'd written it more so um, talking about like psychedelics and whatnot and uh, how, you know, once, once you've got in the car, you, you're kind of in the car until you get to the end of the, this, the trip. And uh, really all that you have with you are the things that you've worked on internally. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I didn't realize how heavy that was as a song until I got the opportunity to share it with a dying friend. And I realized that, you know, it was, it meant a lot more than that. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, cause at the end of the, at the end of the road, whether no matter what you believe, it's all what you've worked on in here that you're taking with you. I had, I had the, uh, I had the good opportunity, the blessing to get to show that to Mike before he passed away. Me and my buddies had a, had a, had a real good friend that passed right before, uh, right when the album came out. Actually, it was uh, the day that we released it, if I'm not mistaken, was the day before Hospice came in. So it was real close there. He got to hear it and uh, we got to go play some music for him. And then when we left, Sondra was playing Mike uh, the album and said that she was going to play it for him and, until he left. And uh, I, I don't get to be home at all the special moments playing on the road. You know, we miss a lot of uh, birthdays and miss a lot of graduations and a lot of weddings and a lot of funerals. More importantly, we miss the moments before the funerals. And uh, I'm just really thankful that I got to be there when I did. And uh, instead of Mike going out of this world listening to my album, I got to sing for Mike. One of the biggest gigs I ever got to play. Mike was a Mike was a really good friend. He was a brother. He was a traveling man. Been all over the world, man. He was a hippie. He was a moonshine. And on the way to the hospital to be with him, I was listening to uh, Corey Brandon, who's one of my favorite songwriters. Um, he's an amazing songwriter. He's a badass guitar player. And he has this song called Sour Mash. And I figured that Mike would, <laughs> would appreciate it. So I didn't really, I didn't have an instrument with me. And I thought that it, it, it lended itself well to an acapella number. So I'm going to leave you with this one. I've rambled and ranted for a good long time here. Thank you for being attentive while I did that. I appreciate you all being here. I hope that you've uh, had a good time. I hope that this has been a revival of the spirit for you. And I hope that you've had a lot of fellowship here. So let's do this one and then uh, let's have the rest of the evening. Have a good one. Be safe. Have fun. Yes, sir. How I come from is mostly sky. Even though the county's dry, didn't stop a stream nearby from giving us a daughter. She was born in a barrel of American hope. Made of sugar, maple, and charcoal smoke, and she just goes to show you folks what God can do with water. When I go below the gloomy ground, better by the room around. Let her weep and lift a glass, bittersweet sour mash. Once when I was going through, same old famous, same old blues, tired of either crying to you or cussing up quarreling. Yes, I slipped and sipped astray. Only took one taste to see the way back to Tennessee to stay, Tennessee, my darling. 
When I go below the gloomy ground, better buy the roomy round. Let her weep and lift a glass, bittersweet sour mash. I don't want no Beaujolais. Saki cider Chardonnay, keep tequila far away. You know what I'm craving? It ain't champagne, no fine chill. It's not a rock, good shine or swill. You ask me, life's a cask, bittersweet sour mash. When I go below the gloomy ground, better buy the roomy round. Better weep and lift a glass, bittersweet sour mash. Thank you. Yeah!